All right, it's Artist MMC. Just finished seeing Snake Eyes, and surprisingly enough, um, I liked it. <laughs> that worked out all right. Um, I liked it. It had a lot of good action in it. Story was easy enough to follow and accept. I guess I can put it that way. Um, it did shed things in a different light, so I'm trying to really put together how Larry Hama changed up the Snake Eyes origin. Outside of him not being white anymore, which I know all the white geeks are upset about, that um, Snake Eyes got um, ethnic swapped. Um, to me, it makes more sense that Snake Eyes be Asian. Uh, I am a fan of the original Snake Eyes being a, a white guy. But like I said before, as um, far as I know, Snake Eyes was always black. He always wore all black and you never saw his face. It never really mattered to me. But I can understand how some people can be pissed off about that shit. Um, this one, I think Harry Golden did a good job. I liked his um, his poses. He looked a hell of a lot better than uh, Finn Jones trying to do martial arts. It's like he took it seriously and they really got in and uh, did some work with him. Um, the co-star who was playing Tommy or Storm Shadow, he looked awesome wielding them two swords. That should look badass. And I will say from the jump, um, fight scenes were reminiscent of the raid. And sure enough, at the moment I'm thinking, okay, these fight scenes look as good as the raid movies. Next couple scenes I get to, and Aiko Huas is in this shit, and I'm like, oh, hell yeah. No wonder. So... I was happy with that, that it had uh, Aiko Huas in it. And Aiko Huas is um, one of those guys I, I rave about, like Joe Talzin, who came out of the Raid movies. So, with him being in it and some of the other people gave a lot of legitimacy to the fight scenes and the fight choreography, which was actually really good. They did a lot of sword fighting in this, which I like, and some stuff I had not seen before. I really like the fight, the fight scenes using the swords and seeing people using one or two swords and different other um, samurai or ninjutsu weapons in it. Um, My rough feel on it is, not to spoil it, it wasn't a bunch of people in there. It was me and like three other people seeing it because it's Thursday night. Said it came out Friday, but here it is. Thursday night, they let it out. And they're probably doing it just because they got to stay ahead of some of this other stuff that's coming out. Um, what can I say about that? I liked it. The sets look good. Costume design was on point. Looked really good. Even changing a little bit of the classic Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes costumes was interesting. Um, chick playing a Baroness. I'm trying to remember who the hell she is. And I think I might have seen her in the Kingsman or something like that. I'm not sure if that's that same um, chick or not. The little gazelle chick that was in the first Kingsman movie. Not sure if that's the same uh, female. I have to go back and check. Um, Scarlet was all right, but she kept looking like um, uh, what's her name to me? She was uh, Mary Jane in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. She kept looking like that to me. But otherwise, the other people that was in the movie were were good. I liked them. I believe them. Their role. 
and even when it got to more comic booky elements in it where there's a jewel and they introduce Cobra and all that other stuff it's a bit interesting the way they work that in there to get bring you back to that comic book element of the um, the uh, characters so there's some things in it that would rub me the wrong way um, one thing in particular that I just laughed about when I saw it was like, oh, God damn, here we go with this Avenger shit again. But how it came off in the movie seemed a little contrived at the, at the moment. But you don't see it, so you're just left to believe that these people can do what the fuck they did. Whatever. Um... Yeah, they got a little bit of their shine in there for the for the ladies. The ladies got a little bit of shine in there, which is a given. So, outside of that, it's a pretty straightforward movie. I mean, I would watch it and enjoy it. It would be a Sunday movie. It's not like, oh, I was completely blown away by what I saw. But it would be a Sunday movie where, that I could sit down and just, just binge on and watch fucking this and then G.I. Joe and, and uh, G.I. Joe 2 and you know eat my popcorn eat my red vines and call it a day afterwards but it was alright it was alright movie I don't think it's gonna break a box office record or anything like that it may do really good internationally I can see it doing really good over there here it may it may hit with a thud because the internet and the uh, white geeks will really be pissed off. They'll really be upset because white boys don't get no shine in this. This is not a movie for white boys to get no shine. It's an all Asian cast before Shang-Chi movie came out and the only white person in this motherfucker is Scarlet. The only one. So if you're looking for some white identification, you're going to be really pissed off because it ain't here for you. This is not the movie for you to go into and look to see yourself represented. It's not. It's Asians and at least one black man. Uh, so if, that, if you need that to feel like you would like a character or a movie... <laughs> catch the next movie. <laughs> Maybe they'll do a um, Duke G.I. Joe origin <laughs> for you, but this won't be it. If you're a fan of the Snake Eyes character and the Storm Shadow character, regardless of if they was white, black, Asian, or whatever, and you're a fan of G.I. Joe and you want to see how that's worked in there, you might enjoy the movie, and you might have some critiques about the origins of Snake Eyes and how they altered that a bit. But otherwise... Like I've said many times, they make these movies for people who don't know the material that much. And that's why they'll do a remake. This is a remake. Can I see Henry Golding playing this part again? Yeah, they left it open for a sequel. Will he get one? Who's to say? Hasbro has plenty of money. So if Hasbro want to back another one, they can have another one all day. They did two G.I. Joe movies and those weren't really that damn good even when they brought The Rock into it. They're good for fans of G.I. Joe like myself that was like oh shit it's this oh it's this but we'll see. We'll see. I'm disappointed though that Ray Park wasn't in this somewhere. That's what I'm a little disappointed about. Because I think Ray Park did a hell of a job as uh, Snake Eyes in the original two G.I. Joe movies. And I would have liked to see him get a nod in this movie somehow, some way. He could have been some faceless ninja or something. I didn't see his name in the credits. So I'm kind of disappointed. But when I think about it, they were probably filming this maybe during COVID or maybe when Ray Park had all that bullshit going on with him. So, kind of disappointed, but it is what it is. First Snake Eyes on film is Ray Park, and that'll always be Snake Eyes for me. 
and then Henry Golden's coming in second reprise in the role. So that's it. That's it for me. That's 10 minutes. I'm about to go home and get something to eat. But that was Snake Eyes. I enjoyed it. I could watch it again, but why would I? I've seen it now. So like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.